and all the results that they had received pointed to one person, Stephen McDaniel. Any confirmation that there was blood in any of those apartments? No confirmation, but the day of the crime scene, Macon police did ask for the county sheriff's department to give them more luminal. Since July 1st, Stephen McDaniel has been held here at the Bibb County Law Enforcement Center. Lauren's family, friends, and even community members who didn't know her have shown support outside of her apartment. 96.3% of the workforce at Robbins will not be directly affected by these reductions. The driver will say they haven't been smoking marijuana, but admit they have been taking this. Romney placed a chain lock around his fence to keep people off his property. Right now, it's just a pile of dirt and clay, but the range is expected to be completed in May. As you can see right now, it doesn't look like much. They're taking apart the stage and all the chairs are being picked up. But this afternoon, over a thousand community members came out to hear the plan. But here in Central City Park and you all are here also. At, whoa, he's right in my face too. And the weather's been looking great. Tyler, how's that seven day forecast looking for us? The results are in for the first and largest statewide presidential straw poll here in Georgia. Flags across Macon Bay fire stations flew at half mast to honor the life of a fellow firefighter. President Barack Obama is six securing his spot in the White House by fundraising for the presidential election. What is so, it? April showers brings May flowers, right? What does May flowers bring though? I don't know. What's that? Pilgrims. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. they, when they came up to you, ran up to you. I couldn't do nothing. If I did something, they would bite me more. Four-year-old Jackson Haney is limping today and has scratches and bite marks on his face. On Tuesday afternoon, he was attacked by three dogs in his front yard. And he was screaming. So I ran to the door. And I seen his dogs on my baby. <laughs> Crystal Haney just moved to this home on Lakewood Avenue in Macon last week and was having her satellite TV installed. Her kids followed the service technician outside and then everything happened so quickly. Jackson says he and his sister walked outside and within minutes dogs ran across the yard, pinned him down on the ground right here to the point where he couldn't even get up. Next thing I know I heard Jackson out there crying, screaming. Thanks to the technician, who Haney says also used to be a police officer, they were able to get the dogs off Jackson. But for those few minutes on the ground, the boy suffered bites and scratches to his face and his leg. He has a big old gash right here. You can see the inside of his meat of his leg. Macon Animal Control took custody of the dogs, but officials have not released any information on the incident. Haney thinks they were pit bulls, but that hasn't been confirmed either. Jackson is recovering from the attack, and as for his mom, she is thankful for the satellite technician that got the dogs off her child. I just thank God for him, because if he wouldn't have been here, my baby would have been dead probably. Michelle Casada for New Central. It's hard for families in Lamar County to rely on each other after they've all been affected by an EF3 tornado that ripped through the community, leaving nothing but rubble behind. I said, I'm looking for a house, and I said, what house? <laughs> Nothing. Maria Gunter returned home this morning from a business trip to learn that her husband was found near a creek behind what used to be her two-story brick house on Grove Street. Her family members and their homes were also missing. About 10 homes on Grove Street were completely destroyed and some are even non-existent. But while structures can be rebuilt, the losses that occurred in this home will affect the Gunter family forever. Maria's brother-in-law and his wife, Paul and Ellen Gunter, were living in a mobile home. They didn't make it. They've been asking me to go to the funeral home. I said, I cannot go and see them. I don't want to look at it. Paul and Ellen's adoptive seven-year-old child was found in the woods. She was taken to the hospital along with Maria's nephew and his wife. Most of the residents on Grove Street are family and are going through this tough time together. We heard the sirens. We went into the hallway, sat down, covered up with pillows. All within three minutes, it was gone. And so was half the neighborhood. As residents pick up the pieces, they remember the Gunters and continue to get through the disaster with their loved ones. Beautiful people. Uh, good news is they, they love the Lord and, and they're okay today, you know. We're still surviving and struggling, and, uh, but God's good, you know, uh, and you move on. Michelle Casada for News Central. And there's the back technique, guys. Give them a nice big round of applause. That's it easy looks like alligator wrestling, football. but the Kachunga and Alligator Show does more than make a man battle against a gator in a closed pit. They don't run as fast as you might have been told. In fact, guys, we have the opportunity once to clock this gator. He was running 12 miles an hour. 
Dave was in front doing 13. The show entertains the public while informing and educating them on facts about alligators, like what to do if you see a gator in your yard. Once you've got him by the tail, ooh, you drag him to your neighbor's place and leave him there. He's just kidding, just kidding, but, kidding. but really, the show demonstrates that most gators are afraid of humans and want to be left alone. There's nothing about an alligator that we don't know, um, and we're, we're, but we're not trying to do, make the gator do anything he can't do. You know, We just want the gator to be a gator, promote the education. And there's nothing like good old humor to do the trick while entertaining the public through an exhilarating performance. When we first started, yeah, it was great. Um, people just wanted to see you in, in a pit with an alligator, I guess, to see if he made it out. It was a battle every time, but I was younger, so, you know, most of the time I made it out. I've, I've gone through my bites, I've been very fortunate, but, you know, over the years, though, we learned that, you know, we could add some jokes to it. Kachunga thrilled the audience by putting his hand inside the gator's mouth, explaining it won't snap shut until it feels something hit his jaw. It's a cool trick to see and something that is not rehearsed or practiced with the same gator. We need to be able to show what alligators can do. And to have a gator that's tamed, we couldn't get them to work or act like an alligator. After over 25 years of doing this, Dave and Bert have also included children in the show, and they always have a favorite part. I'm pet an alligator and even sit on the back of its tail. Now, Kachunga doesn't recommend trying to carry one of the gators you saw earlier, but after the show, you can carry this little guy and take a photo with him. You know, you got education, you got humor, you know, the comedy, excitement and the danger. It uh, makes a better show and it draws the attention better. And when they leave, they actually remember a little bit more of what we told. Megan police are no longer treating a missing persons case and a homicide as two separate investigations. Chief Mike Burns from the Macon Police Department says they have not confirmed DNA on a body they found at Barristers Hall apartment complex on Georgia Avenue Thursday, but they believe it is the body of Mercer Law graduate Lauren Giddings who's been missing since Saturday. We can't positively uh, say she is until we can do a DNA test. Uh, the FBI is doing that for us. We're not sure when we'll get back, but uh, we're all pretty sure that this is going to be the victim. Police say the condition of the body has made it difficult to identify, but our media partner, the Macon Telegraph, reports that a police officer says the body was found dismembered. Chief Burns did not confirm that. I'm not going to answer that out of respect for the family. Police shut down the Macon landfill Friday and brought in canine search and rescue cadaver dogs to find more evidence. Meanwhile, police now say they have several persons of interest in the case. One of those is Lauren Ginning's neighbor, Stephen McDaniel, who was arrested Friday morning on a burglary charge. Police say he has two counts of burglary from a case at the same apartments two years ago. Byrne says McDaniel is a suspect in the homicide because he lives next door to the victim. But there are several other leads they are looking into. Well, we have other people of interest that had made uh, contact with her or she made contact with them the couple of days before her disappearance. So we're going to check all leads until they're exhausted. I interviewed McDaniel Thursday, who says he and friends of Lauren had been searching for her. Here's his emotional response after he learned that a body was recovered from the scene. We just don't know where she is. Mm -hmm. What about um, in the like the parking lot area? I know they've been doing a lot of. I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body. Um, had you heard? Any, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? I. I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if it's the same person or not. So that's how we're trying to ask people if they know who lived there. Are you okay, sir? I think I need to sit down. Okay. District Attorney Greg Winter says McDaniel admitted to police in a voluntary statement that he has walked into other apartments and taken items. McDaniel is being held without bond. In Macon, Michelle Casada for New Central. At Hendricks Produce in Metter, Georgia, about 150 workers plant, pick, and package onions and watermelons. This year is the farm's 28th year in business, and the last year it might produce at its normal capacity. 75% of the workforce at Hendricks Farms is contracted through the H-2A program, but this year 100 workers arrived two weeks late, leaving farmers with crops sitting in the ground waiting to be picked. They got here and began harvesting, of course they harvested all they could, but we still lost 150 acres out of the 800 acres. 
and that 150 acres just input cost would cost us over $300,000. Farmers are calling H-2A an expensive and fully flawed program, which they believe is also having trouble getting workers to come to Georgia. A lot of them that normally come here and work are scared to went to the North to the Carolinas because they're scared of being deported by this immigration bill. Cultivators say the newly passed HB 87 law has workers spooked, even the legal ones, and they're not sure if the ones working now will come back in the fall. It will put us out of business or cripple us so bad we can't, we'd have to cut down our operation and uh, or might have to just quit. Commissioner Gary Black of Georgia's Ag Department, along with state and federal officials, say the Department of Corrections may be willing to supply prisoners and unemployed probationers for labor, but some farmers aren't happy with that solution. You have to have knives to cut zucchini, cabbage, you have to have clippers to cut these plants. This is something about giving prisoners weapons. One thing everyone agrees on is the need for a functional guest working program. But Hendricks says legislation is getting ahead of itself in passing laws before the problem is fixed. They say we have 18 million illegals here. If you ran all 18 million out today, you wouldn't have anything to eat in two weeks. In Metter, Georgia, Michelle Casada for News Central.